Want to learn how to make videos like us? Find out after the video how we use insights from vidIQ as our secret YouTube weapon and get a 98% discount. You heard that right, 98% off. But you've got to stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can try vidIQ for yourself for just $1 for 30 days and start making your own hit YouTube videos in no time. In 2021, a storm brewed in the digital world, a storm that was an insult to academia and made its way into the minds of millions upon millions of regular people. That storm started on TikTok, in the shape of a violent conspiracy theory. Did humans once inhabit Mars, and like we're trying to do down here on Earth, make a huge mess of our custodian ship by throwing around a load of planet-shattering superweapons? Today we're going to take apart this theory inch by inch, leaving no stone unturned. We hope the results of our research will educate you as much as surprise you. Maybe some of you right now are still choking on your cornflakes after dismissing any possibility that humans didn't just grace Mars, but blew the hell out of the place. Don't make your judgments too quickly. Around that time, the video went viral and had the media wagging its many tongues. Scientists were talking about microbial life on Mars and the possibility that the red planet might have been a much busier place in the distant past when conditions were very different from what we see now. This gave the TikTok theorist, who you'll get to know in time, a foundation to work with. Think about this. What if you got your hands on a time machine, and after a few trips to the distant past, perhaps hanging out with some swashbuckling pirates or attending a few gladiatorial contests in the great Roman arenas, you decided it was time to go really far back? Maybe you turned the dial past 66 million years ago, when at some point around that time dinosaurs and other life forms had a really rough stretch when a meteor as big as a mountain slammed into Earth and kicked up so much dust and gas into the atmosphere that there was a great extinction period. Maybe you went back 100 million years just to see the largest animal that's ever lived on Earth, the giant sauropod Argentinosaurus, over 100 feet long and weighing in at about 70 tons. This would have been a scary trip for a time traveler, when also possibly confronted by a T-Rex or maybe the formidable Gigantosaurus or the happy snappy Carcharodontosaurus. But there would be more to worry about than getting crushed between the teeth of a large meat-eating beast. 100 million years ago, it was really damn hot on the planet. There wasn't even ice at the poles. There was less oxygen, but it would still likely be possible for a time traveler to have a date with a T-Rex. It just wouldn't have been great in terms of air quality. Theoretically, humans could have survived as far back as 500 million years ago. Still, back then, the only life on Earth was likely nothing more complex than multicellular plants and animals. Conditions weren't yet ripe for complex life. Maybe 400 million years ago, there was the first insects, and around 397 million years ago, the four-legged tetrapods came onto the scene. As you know, animals adapt to their environment, all living things do. Put a polar bear in a desert, and it'll have a tough time. Dump a small child into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean during the winter, and it'll never have a chance to tell you that you're not a very nice person. Stick a human time traveler on Earth 800 million years ago, and he'll hate you for it. If our time traveler went back that far, he would have a bit of a shock to the system. Literally, this was a time when the atmosphere was mostly carbon monoxide, along with methane and ammonia. Oxygen in the atmosphere might have been around 10% of today's current levels, not enough for us humans. The Earth was not hospitable for the first two billion or so years. Earthquakes happened all the time, as did massive volcanic eruptions. It was quite literally held on Earth. Although many disagree with the time periods and what exactly went down on Earth, the so-called Great Oxidation Event didn't happen until about 2.4 billion years ago. That's when the Earth's oxygen levels started to rise, making multicellularity possible. Prior to that, there were microbes, but we were a long way off multicellular organisms. When the Earth got going 4.5 billion years ago, after cooling down from a huge cloud of dust and gas, the place was totally inhospitable for any form of life. Toxic gases ruled the atmosphere, and it was one great big mass of molten rock on the surface. The place started getting whacked by asteroids and anything else that space could throw at it during what we call the Late Heavy Bombardment. This helped things to solidify. It created the crust we all know and love and can't live without. You need to hear all of this fundamental stuff for two reasons. One, that you understand the rest of what we're about to say, and two, so you never become another person that believes every dodgy thing you hear on social media applications. So, to reiterate, complex life on Earth just wasn't possible for billions of years, and it only got going when conditions made it possible. It wasn't as if life was just biding its time, it happened because it could, nothing more than that. Mars is about the same age as Earth. 
So at first glance, you might think, well, if complex life formed on Earth, then why didn't it happen on our dear neighbor? Earth and Mars are not even that far from each other in space terms. In the bigger scheme of things, they're pretty much cheek to cheek, locked in a great cosmic embrace. The distance changes, of course, as the planets orbit the Sun, but when they are at the closest, they're a mere 48 million miles from each other. At the most distant, they're a piddling 249 million miles apart. Now we'll come to the video that started all this talk in the first place, which at last count had close to 8 million views. The username of the person that posted the video was Crackhead Joe Dirt. Okay, so this might not instill confidence, but let's not try to discriminate here. Let's give Mr. Crackhead Joe Dirt a chance. In the video, he asks the question, Mars isn't naturally red. Want to know what can cause a planet to turn red and change after a couple million years? Drum roll, please. The answer, if enough nukes were to go off on a planet, the first thing that would happen is a nuclear winter. A nuclear winter is an aftermath of nuclear blasts causing ash that is so thick that it blocks out the sunlight. Nuclear winters can last anywhere between 100 years and 1,000 depending on how much ash is in the atmosphere. Now that's quite a lot to unpack, and it seems that many people didn't even bother to rip off the first layer of packaging. After listening to what we've just told you in the first part of the show, you should be very skeptical. What this guy is saying is we actually did live on Mars, but we made the mistake of nuking the hell out of each other and making the place into an inhospitable dust bowl that it is today. The theory, as you know, is a bit different from the one we've been told. Scientists say life never formed on Mars as it did here because of its small mass and lack of gravity. It was unable to have an atmosphere like we do here on Earth and keep in the heat. For that reason, it didn't ever retain water very well, and the water, dear viewers, was direly needed for the formation of life on Earth. It's also very cold on Mars these days, going down to something like negative 220 degrees Fahrenheit. Mars also doesn't really have a strong magnetic field as the Earth does, which protects us from solar radiation. Oh, then there's that oxygen problem. A significant problem when it comes to sustaining life. Oxygen makes up 21% of the Earth's atmosphere, with 78% being nitrogen and others being carbon dioxide, neon, and hydrogen. Mars, meanwhile, has a really, really thin atmosphere, about 1% of the volume of Earth's. Mars can't keep its atmosphere because of the lack of gravity, which means it escapes into space. And to make matters worse, 96% of Mars' atmosphere is carbon dioxide. Only one-tenth of Mars' thin atmosphere is oxygen. If you were somehow dumped there right now, you'd suffocate. Your blood would boil, literally, although you might have a fraction of a second to get really angry with the person that sent you there. Now some of you are probably thinking, wait a minute, didn't you just tell us Earth used to be a big toxic bag of gases in which humans could not survive? Correct. You might also wonder if because Mars has gone through many atmospheric changes in the past, and we mean distant past, humans might have diddled around there. You might think this is more possible when we tell you that in our jaunts to Mars we found evidence of dried out lake beds and gullies, which the experts tell us are signs that water once flowed there. Just in 2020, an article in the esteemed Nature Journal went a step further, saying researchers have detected a group of lakes hidden underneath the red planet's icy surface. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. The scientists say they think there might be water underneath that ice. It's not nailed on, not by a long shot. Still, NASA's Mars Curiosity rover not too long ago came across evidence that billions of years ago there was likely a lake in something called the Gale Crater. Climate change on Mars put an end to that when it evaporated the lake. Scientists are now saying that life on Mars was a thing. There is a distinct possibility that microorganisms did bless Mars at one point or at some points in time. They say that about 4.1 billion to 3.7 billion years ago, during something called the Noachian period, the atmosphere wasn't super thin like it is now and has been for ages. So there was water everywhere and regular rainfall. There were rivers and lakes and even an ocean. They say things were not too different from how they were on Earth. So yes, microbial life could have flourished. Crackhead Joe Dirt isn't wrong when he says there's a good chance that there was life on Mars. There probably was. But everything else he says does indeed lead us to think that this man was smoking crack when he came up with the rest of his theory. As you know, life evolved on Earth because the conditions were right. Earth was warmer than Mars. It began to have a thicker atmosphere. It was protected from the sun's radiation. And because water stuck around, we came into being from those tiny single-celled organisms. So the crack guy would be correct in saying scientists say Mars might, for a long time, have had similar conditions to Earth. But those conditions didn't last. Scientists have never said they had. 
they know they didn't. That's why Mars didn't get tetrapods or dinosaurs or primates that over millions of years got down from the trees to make weapons with which to kill animals and eventually invent TikTok to post silly conspiracy theories on. For all our scurrying around on Mars, we found nothing to suggest anything close to this happened. But the crack man is saying we developed nuclear weapons. Here's another blast of his masterful hypothesis. After all the natural resources are drained up from the nuclear winter, the planet turns red from dust. My theory is that we've come from Mars after we've drained all of its natural resources and destroyed it with nuclear bombs. He's saying that we had a great big scrap on Mars and what followed was a nuclear winter, which you'll remember he said lasted between 100 years and 1000, depending on how much ash was in the atmosphere. Both numbers are very small, considering what we're talking about is billions of years of atmospheric changes. As for Mars being red because of nuclear fallout, that's more humbug, according to non-crack smoking scientists. Mars is red because of the rust that comes from Mars's plentiful iron oxide. Mars has a lot of iron in its soil, which when met with the little oxygen on Mars that it does have, turned it into iron oxide. Earth also had a lot of iron when it was busy forming, but because of stronger gravitational forces it sank below the surface, whereas Mars's iron hung about on top. Over many millions or billions of years it rusted. But even if this saddening bore of a TikTok scientist was right about the nuclear fallout turning the surface red, which he definitely isn't, consider this. The first primates on Earth go back about 55 million years. Maybe our earliest ancestor that started walking on two legs, Aurora Tugenensis, goes back about 6 million years. These guys were no Einsteins, far from it. About 2.5 million years ago, our two-legged friends got a bit smarter when Homo habilis started making tools. This was a big breakthrough, but it wasn't quite splitting the atom. They were dumb as mud, those guys. Homo sapiens, modern humans, only got going somewhere around 200,000 to 300,000 years ago, and they might have developed sophisticated speech around 350,000 to 50,000 years ago, and may have headed out of Africa between 70,000 and 100,000 years ago. So, Mr. Crackfiend wants us to believe that billions of years ago on Mars, when there was possibly abundant water, at a time where there was nothing on Earth in terms of life other than microorganisms, humans had already evolved on Mars and come up with the idea of nuclear fission. He's saying that somehow our life on Mars mirrored evolution on Earth, but billions of years before. We destroyed Mars billions of years ago after which a nuclear winter lasting only a relatively short time compelled us to switch planets. And yet, it seems after we did this switch, we somehow returned to being microorganisms that had to evolve again. If this sounds confusing, it's not your fault. It's because what this guy said doesn't make any sense at all. We mean, if he just talked a fraction of the bull and tried to say there was once a more complex kind of life on Mars that humans on Earth have so far not managed to find any evidence of, that might have worked. Even so, as we've explained, conditions on Mars likely made this impossible. It's good to be curious, but it's always better to arm yourself with knowledge than be taken in by folks like Mr. Crackhead Joe Dirt. Now are you wondering how we come up with the ideas for videos? It's all thanks to vidIQ. vidIQ is a super powerful YouTube tool that basically acts like a cheat code for picking video topics. With vidIQ you can see exactly how many people are searching for a topic each month, how much competition there is for that topic from other creators, and what videos from those creators are trending. Put all that information together and you can find the perfect video, like we did hopefully with this one. So go check it out for yourself and get vidIQ for just $1 for 30 days. That's 98% off the regular price, but only at vidIQ.com slash the info show. Now you need to watch why flat earthers are dead wrong, or have a look at how humanity will actually colonize Mars year by year.